After a year of conflict, starvation, and desperation continues to escalate in Sudan. This week, U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken asked the Sudanese Armed Forces, the SFF, and the Rapid Support Forces, RSF, to participate in ceasefire talks in August, mediated by the United States. Sama Salma is a Sudanese strategic analyst and the president of the U.S. Educated Sudanese Association. She tells B.H. Douglas Mpuga that the war in Sudan now is one of the worst human rights uh, catastrophes in the world. The situation in Sudan is absolutely out of hand, and it is one of the worst humanitarian catastrophes in the world right now. That doesn't mean that there's no solution possible. Of course there's a solution possible, but it requires political will and it requires adequate uh, and sufficient pressure from the international community. Uh, talking of political will, the, uh, the two belligerents have not been willing to resolve this issue, but now there are reports that the command of the Sudanese Paramilitary Rapid Support Forces has agreed to next month's uh, ceasefire talks. Is there a way the international community can urge these parties to uh, reach an agreement? Well, Douglas, the two generals, General Abdel Fattah al-Burhan, who is the commander of the Sudanese Armed Forces and uh, the de facto head of the Sovereign Council of Sudan, and his rival, uh, General Hamidti, uh, Mohammed Hamdan Degalo, who is the commander of the RSF, the Rapid Support Forces Paramilitary, neither one of them has been genuine or really wanted to find a solution to this war from day one. They're in a war to fight for political power, for economic power, and to escape accountability from possible persecution for current war crimes and past war crimes, including, uh, you know, the 2003-2005 Darfur genocide. So neither of them actually wants to find a solution to this war. The solution has to come from extreme pressure from the neighboring countries and the international community, unfortunately. And there are certain tools that can be used to put that pressure on. How would you describe the impact to the citizens of the country, given that now there's a lack of medical facilities and uh, people people are maybe running out of food soon, according to UN agencies? So Sudanese people are dying uh, from bullets, from bombings, from drone attacks. They're dying from hunger. They're dying from lack of medical attention. They're dying for all sorts of reasons. They're even dying from shock and trauma and from the sight of seeing family members being raped and being shot and their homes being looted and burned. And so there are direct ways that you can be a victim of the Sudanese war, and there are very indirect ways that you can be a victim of the Sudanese war. That was Sama Selma, a Sudanese strategic analyst and president of the U.S. Educator Sudanese Association. She spoke with Douglas Mpuga from Virginia, USA. Rwanda's President Paul Kagame has sacked a cabinet minister over suspected involvement in corruption. The Prime Minister announced on Thursday morning Dr. Jen Mujawa Maria would leave his public service docket immediately. Today, 25th July, Dr. Jean Mujawa Maria has been dismissed from her position as Minister of Public Service and Labor, owing to matters of accountability under investigation. A statement from the Office of the Prime Minister reads in part. The Premier did not disclose details of crime committed by the Minister. Kagame is renowned for his tough stance against corruption. He has always dismissed and caused the prosecution of senior government officials over corruption. Prior to her appointment in November 2019, Mujawa Maria served as ambassador of Rwanda in Russia from 2013 and rector of Kigali Institute of Science and Technology KIST from 2011 to 2013. She also served as Rwanda's Minister of Gender and Family Promotion, 2008 to 2011, Minister of Education, 2006 to 2008, Minister of State in Charge of Higher Education, 2005 to 2006, and Minister of State in Charge of Primary and Secondary Education in the Ministry of Education, Science, Technology, and Scientific Research, 
2003 to 2005. The outgoing minister is a PhD holder in physical chemistry from the Indian Institute of Technology. Rwanda is the 49th least corrupt nation out of 180 countries, according to the 2023 Corruption Perceptions Index reported by Transparency International. Rwanda was among the first countries to sign and ratify the African Union Convention on Preventing and Combating Corruption, AUCPCC and has made significant progress in implementing a legal framework dealing with corruption.